to the next part of your Mimeo training. We're going to start off with a few basic things and probably get a little more advanced into this particular video. Um, I'm going to start off with our bar at the top. Um, if we're going to look at view, notice you have some of the same options you have with your toolbar from before and the bottom bar also. But one thing I want you to notice right here is our standard toolbar. Notice I have mine on the bottom because I like it on the bottom of the board. You can also put it at the top, which is the default. So if you're just opening Mimeo for the first time, this is where it will be um, at the top of your board when you have it in full screen. So if I put it into full screen, it's at the very top of your board. If you would like it at the bottom of your board under view, you can just move it down to the bottom. Now you can also turn this off. I don't really recommend doing that if you're going to be using any of those buttons, but let's just turn it back on. You can also make it float, which means I can put it wherever I want to but I particularly like just leaving it on the bottom, out of the way. We also have this tab view. Notice I have mine on the right. You can put it on the left, or you can turn that off as well. I move my thumbnails over here. I can have them on the right. I can turn them off. I like mine on the right. The status bar is this bar at the very bottom. It tells you when things are saving, loading, all of that information. It also has a shortcut for the gallery browser and your tools and your settings. I just kind of leave it there because when you go into full screen, it disappears anyways. So I, I have no issue with leaving that there. <clears throat> Under your insert tab at the top, notice a lot of these are the same as everything that we've already talked about in previous videos. <clears throat> One that we haven't talked about, though, is New Activity, which is also available on the bottom bar right here on this bar. So if you click on New Activity, it organizes it by class. So let's say I'm going to pick a random one and go into Social Studies, and then it breaks it up by grade level. Let's do uh, 3 to 5, and let's do a four-column chart and see what it gives us. We can select a topic. We have all these different topics that we can select in this category. Let's do U.S. regions. We can select a category. We'll do Midwest. Let's do Northeast. Let's do the South and the West. All right, so next, it's going to make an interactive slide for your Mimeo lesson. So let's just keep going next. This is what it will look like. You can write your objective in on the bottom. I'm just going to leave it blank for now for instructional purposes. And when I click Finish, we should be able to organize these into different areas wherever we think they might go. Some might not actually fit into any of these categories. But notice it puts the X on there, letting me know that I'm wrong. Also, your objective is in this question mark. You just either click on it, and you can click on it. It'll go back away. This particular button will ask you can solve it for you. You can reset the answers for our next student to try. Or you could go back and edit this that we just had opened. You can go back in and edit all of your information. So let's reset the answers. Let's let the next one try. Oh, and then, of course, you're going to get someone like this that's going to just keep moving them until they're all right. But you can always solve it, and then they can see where all the proper cities go. Um, there's tons of different resources, again, under this tab that are preloaded. It's really neat to have this these options. Um, I've used a few math ones. And let's just do another one just so you can see another example. Let's say, uh, let's go with musical definitions. There's a lot of choices in this particular category. And sorry, music teachers, I do not know my musical definitions. So, You get the idea. There's tons of different options you can do, and you don't have to have this exact setup. You can play around, see what other categories they have, more to your class, what suits you. They have all these different options, all these different kinds of charts that you can look through. Um, it's very useful. Next on our list, we have, let me just get rid of all this on my blank screen. I am going to, actually I'm going to put one back up show you under tools we already talked about our tools but we're going to look at the settings at this point there's a few things that you would like to see in settings first of all classroom devices you should have your usb hub and your mimeo teach connected if they're not 
your pen on your board is not going to work. Both of these would be connected. This is what you plug into your computer. This is your actual Mimeo Teach on the board. Under ink capture, this is something that you really don't want to mess around with too much. Just kind of leave this alone. Um, sometimes you might have to go in here if there are issues, but that's probably something that you would be calling IT for. Interactive, this is where you select use previous calibration. We've talked about this in the first section of these videos. Um, so that's very important. Now, if you're talking about your pen that you have for the Mimeo board, your stylus tip, that's your action. What that means is that's your clicker for your mouse. You can change that to be any different things. Um, but I just leave it alone. The default is pretty much standard and what everyone would use. I'm going to skip mobile for now. We'll come back to that. Um, under your notebook, you have a bunch of features you can edit. Your recorder, the only thing that you would change in here is if you want to change the recording quality of your video. But just remember, the higher the quality, the larger the video file is going to be and the longer upload time it's going to be. I can't edit this right now because I am using it to record a video at this current time. Um, but it, it ranges from low quality to high quality, just like anything else would. Um, tablet devices, notice there's nothing attached. You can attach your iPad to this, which I'm about to show you after I talk about these two topics, and then we'll go back up to mobile, which is how you connect your iPad. But notice we don't have any tablets attached right now. Mimeo Studios, or the Mimeo company, also offers their own tablet, but it doesn't have a screen that you can see. It's just like a bamboo tablet, tablet that's just a flat surface that you can draw on. It's not something I would use because I have my iPad, but you have that option as well if we can get that hardware. Um, here's where you can edit your settings for the Mimeo vote. Um, you can display student scores on handheld units so that they can see their scores, or you can make them wait till the end and see it up on the board. However you decide to set it up, that's up to you. But now we're going to go to the mobile section of this video. Notice there is a QR code. On your iPad, if you go into the App Store, there's an app, and that app is called Mimeo Mobile. I will show you a video of my iPad screen after I do a little talking about this, but all you have to do is take that app and scan that code, and once you scan that code, which I just did, notice if I go up to Classroom Devices, my iPad right here, Mimeo Mobile, that's my iPad. And if you also go down to Tablet Devices, Teacher, because I have it registered as me, um, it's pretty nice to be able to control it with my iPad because me moving this mouse around right now is strictly from my iPad. So if I want to move Colorado up here, I'm using my fingers to move Colorado wherever I want it. So. I'm doing everything with my iPad. I'm not even touching my computer at all. And it doesn't just work in the Mimeo software. I can have it work in other programs. Anything on my computer I can access. So for example, let's say you want to pull up a website for students to look at. You can pull up that website. And I'm doing this all with my iPad. There's an on-screen keyboard that you can pop up on your iPad just like every other app would have. Um, it has a nice little toolbar at the top, but I will now switch over to my iPad so you can see what it looks like and how to set it up that way. So here I am going to be on my iPad. 